what's up, witches? I have been in a period of profound fatigue. But this morning, um, it's the first full day of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, and it rained all night for the first time in so very long. And so it's gray and my favorite kind of weather. And I have a deck to review for you today. This is um, another one of the birthday haul decks from my daughter. And it's just a little deck, so it shouldn't take too much energy to look at. This is the Witch's Familiar Runic Oracle by Athene Noctua. And this is from Hay House. Connect with the ancient magic of the divine. The Witch's Familiar Runic Oracle includes 24 cards, each featuring a powerful Elder Futhark rune paired with a majestic animal companion. Offering protection, love, and magical guidance, this pocket-sized deck keeps divine wisdom at your fingertips wherever life may take you. Um, okay, cover design, Nick Walsh cover art, Athene Noctua. It's lovely. Nice, sturdy box with the little thumb holds there. Okay. This 24-card pocket oracle deck features ancient root interpretation. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Paired with majestic animal companions, owls, ravens, snakes, and other magical familiars embody the qualities and energies of the Elder Futhark. Perfect for daily divination practice or as a tool to focus energy during energy during rituals and ceremonies, this compact deck offers guidance, luck, protection, and love as you journey to strengthen your intuition. Okay. I love the tininess of it. I really do. This is 2023 copyright. The contents, we have a welcome. What are runes? Casting your rune cards, navigating the guidebook. Then we have the cards, which are divided into three sets. There's Et One Freya, Et Two Heimdall, and Et Three Tier. Et is A-E-T-T, -T, and then about the author. Let's go there first. Athene Noctua is the artist and creator behind several oracle and tarot card decks. Her creative process is deeply meditative and forms a key pillar of her spiritual practice. Placing herself at the service of spirit, she works to craft divination tools that open a channel of communication between us and the divine. Living deep in the English countryside on a renovated canal barge, oh my goodness, she is artistically inspired by the energies and cycles of life of the natural environment around her. My husband and I went down a rabbit hole I like a long time ago um, with these canal boats, these long boats in England that people have been taking and renovating into um, houses. It, they're amazing. They're really amazing. Okay, I took some time to look up. I thought I had one of her decks. I have the unfolding path to row. She also has one called Crystal Ball Pocket Oracle and one called Fated, a Pocket Love Oracle. And then this runic one. Very cool. Okay. Merry meet magical folk and welcome to the ancient and magical world of runes and the Elder Futhark, the oldest form of the runic alphabet. The Witch's Familiar Runic Oracle is a starting point to understanding runes, but by no means covers the entire subject. This is a tiny sip from a deep well. And if you find you enjoy working with these cards and their associated magical symbols, there is a wide and wonderful world of knowledge about these ancient runes out there to dive into. If you're a beginner, this guidebook will help you deepen your understanding and improve your interpretation of runes. If you're an established practitioner, feel free to be guided by your own personal knowledge and conception of runic law in your card readings. Um, I have combined each symbol with a familiar that reflects the qualities of the associated rune. Um, I brought the energies of runes and familiars together because I believe humanity's path is eternally interwoven with all the animals we share this world with. In the past, when the runes were born, this primordial connection was deep and strong. This is a connection we can all reestablish and nurture even now in our modern world. A witch's familiar is not a pet. Sometimes it is, <laughs> but a creature that brings its own powers and energies to aid the witch in magic. When you're doing a reading with these cards, please pay equal attention to the familiar and the rune. Either one might bear a message for you or bring a particular energy into the situation in question. 
Um, each reader has their own associations and symbolism that they attach to different animals. Um, my, okay, my wish is that these cards inspire passion for this ancient magical sin system and the special animal companions on this planet with us. Okay. What are runes? A series of ancient alphabets used by the early Germanic and Scandinavian peoples. Runes and inscriptions are found all over the world. They've been found ranging from Greece to Russia, extending to North America and even North Africa. These combined with a number of rune poems which recite the names and understandings of the symbols and a rich oral tradition have given us the associations we have today. Multiple runic alphabets exist, but the one most well understood is common and commonly used today is the Elder Futhark. There are 24 runes in the Elder Futhark. While many modern commercial rune sets contain an additional blank rune, it does not appear in any historical context and is omitted from this deck. Okay, it's grouped into three sets of eight runes, each called an et. Each et is dedicated to a Norse god or goddess. The first et is Freya, the goddess of love and battle. The second is Heimdall, the god of foresight, and the third is Tyr, the god of war and justice. There's much debate whether Otala or Dagaz is best considered the final rune. I have chosen to support Otala as it, it is, as it is a poetic completion of the start by Fihu. The Elder Futhark began with a rune of mobile, expansive prosperity and new beginnings, and it ends with a return to the ancestral home and more permanent generational wealth. Okay, this birthright is both physical and spiritual. It can also be both positive and negative in that it reveals ancestral wounds that when healed will open the way to the hum homecoming you desire. Different runes containing varying degrees of masculine or feminine and contain varying degrees of masculine or feminine energy, as well as some having a more neutral energy. Throughout the guidebook, I have gently indicated the specific energy with the use of pronouns, he, she, they, when speaking about the familiar connected to each rune. That's cool. The power of runes lies in the fact that they are multifaceted. They can be used to divine the future and also hold within themselves the power of the idea they represent. When a rune is selected, spoken, or inscribed, it releases that power in the life of the person. Some runes can be read in reverse or merkstav. Because these oracle cards are a different format than rune stones you might cast in a more traditional matter, manner, I've given all the cards a reverse interpretation. This is generally a shadow or inverse meaning and where applicable follows the merkstav of the rune depicted. Uh, casting your rune cards as you work with your oracle deck, you'll develop a unique relationship with the cards as well as your own special way of reading them. To get you started, I've included a few spreads you might find helpful. There's three sisters, past, present, future, Urd, Verdandi, and Skuld. Three to the power of three is nine cards. And they all say past, present, future, Urd, Verdandi, Skuld. And then we have seven. Uh, core issue, unseen aspect, unseen aspect, initial outcome, initial outcome, ultimate result, ultimate result. Interesting. The ultimate outcome spread is assets, current situation, obst. Okay. So you go one, two, three, four, five. This is current situation, obstacles, assets, attitude of approach, and ultimate outcome. How interesting that the position one is the ultimate outcome. Okay. What is an outcome you hope to achieve? Go through the deck and find the card that most closely represents your goal. So we're, uh, we're picking a significator here. Place it in position one, then shuffle for the other four positions. Then we have full picture spread, light, shadow, light in shadow mix, shadow in light mix. Navigating the guidebook, for each card I've given some insight into the chosen familiar, some details about the runic symbol, five keywords or phrases, and a suggestion of how the rune might form part of a magical practice. Note that there are multiple ways to spell the names of each rune, and some runes have alter alternative names. I've followed my personal preference for this deck. Each card's guidebook entry runs in the order of that rune's place in the runic alphabet. Please reference the table of contents beginning page beginning on page four, to see the runes in order and find the page number. Thank you, thank you, thank you for a table of contents. Okay, so we can see et one Freya, we see the name and the animal, 
we see the animal and then Fihu and then reverse keywords and then magical workings. Awesome. Okay. And that's it. I've had to zoom way in because these are very small cards. You can see just, you know, palm size kind of a little bit bigger. Here is the back and we can see the full Futhark. Um, don't not sure which way it goes. I'm assuming clockwise, but it could maybe not be. And there's a big moon. And then here are the cards. I like that they're dark in the background. We've got this phew, splash of energy. So, Fihu Urus. Now, what's going on in my head <laughs> is uh, if you've never seen the group Heilung, I um, strongly suggest that you go onto YouTube and look them up. Um, I will put down below so you can see how to spell it. They are a Norwegian um, band. They're, they're a ritual group that goes around. They do these fabulous concerts, just amazing stuff. And they have a song where they chant through, and it's the best. And also a great way to learn the Elder Futhark. Okay, so here's Fihu and a little squirrel holding up a nut. And we see also a moon phase. They didn't mention moon phases. Let me see if there's anything mentioned here. I do not see the word moon in there anywhere, so maybe that's just a little... Um, let's look under magical workings. A good rune for attracting abundance. Use moon water. Moon water. Water has been set overnight in the light of the full moon to write this rune invisibly on banknotes. Okay. So it doesn't really mention the moon phase that's on the card, but I see a moon phase, which would be the waning moon. The artwork is lovely. Uru. So we see the rune up at the top and there's the bowl. Look at the crystals and the oak leaves. So you get this idea of strength. I will tell you that I'm not a rune. I don't use runes on a regular basis. Um, I have the Bloom runes. Uh, Ralph Bloom, I think his name was, which are like the only ones to be had way back in the day in the, the 80s. Um, but I just don't use them. So I'm not that familiar. Here's Turisa's wolf. It's beautiful. Look at the flames and the red roses. And we see thorns and a wolf. So I think we get an idea from these images. Ansu's, look at the raven holding this eye. Fascinating. Raido. A whale and jellyfish. Kinas with an owl and a lit torch and books. So we're talking about knowledge and wisdom, I would think. Gable, swan. Look at this black. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but it's black. It could be a, a some sort of lily or lotus. Full moon, so you do see the root, you know, the moon phases changing from card to card. Wunyo, a little hummingbird. Our hummers have finally left for the year, I believe. Hagalaz is a scorpion, and look at the lightning and the full moon. Naudis is a badger, and a new moon. Isa, a bat. Look at the crystals upside down and snowflakes. Yera is a bee. Awas, I think that's Iwas. Look at the kitty, it's a black kitty. There's a kitty skull. You got the big old ears. Pertro. Is snake. I hope these are in focus. Too late to correct it now. There's a key. Algis with a pentagram. 
Mm, they are so beautiful. Look at the stag. Soelo is a kingfisher. Tiwas, a bald eagle and a sword. Do they have bald eagles in England? I realize I don't know that. I don't know why they wouldn't. Burkano. I've seen that spelled Burkana and Suwilu. I've seen spelled Suwelu. So yes, there are different spellings for the hair. Ewa's horse. So beautiful. Her artwork is gorgeous. It's delicate. Mamas. And <laughs> we've got a... Um, what are they called? It's a meerkat. It's a meerkat. And... Um, yeah, <laughs> I could not remember that name. So certainly not something that's in England. Lagus, a seahorse. Look how beautiful. Ingwas is a lion. Dagas is a, looks like a lunar moth, but it's some sort of butterfly. It's a butterfly, not a moth. Otala is a crab. I feel like I've missed something because that went by so quick, but you know, that's, that's what it is. Let's give it a blessing. It's beautiful. And you know, I, in the past, have had an argument with rune cards. Runes are runes. They're supposed to be like on stone or wood or something that you can cast them. And I do have the Bloom Runes, and then I do have also the Bloom Rune deck. Um, but I like that this, you know, this deck does add something more to it. I think the Bloom deck does as well. Um, you can look it up on the channel and see my review of that. I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> so here's our smoke blessing by air and fire. May you be purified and charged. And the book as well. My seawater. By water and earth. May you be blessed and made whole. And by the sound of the bell, may the spirit within you awaken. Guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, oh, thank you so much for being with me, for getting me through every day. And I thank you. Um, I send thanks and blessings to the author and artist, to Athene Noctua. And I ask you please to help me bring forth a really good relevant message for my viewers whenever they might be viewing this I offer you fresh water and the fire of Azrael to bring forth the spirit of divination all right let's give it a little riffle I mean it's only 24 cards how hard is this going to be this is um standard hay house card stock so it's very heavy cardboard but when it's only 24 cards and they're so little no issue. They don't want to bridge too well, and I probably won't do that because they will stay bent. With this thick cardstock, you can kind of see how I've bent them already. No matter. Let's just... I'm going to do my regular six card. Okay, what do we need to know today? I'm reading the questions in our hearts. Please bring me a message about how we can bring our best to meet the times that we are living in. We were made for these times. That's why we're here. What can we do to make the best of them? All right. We have Turisas, Dagas, Hagalas, Yera, Sowilu, and Manaz. Okay, so I have to go to the beginning and uh, look up. 
I wish there was something to indicate which group they were in or maybe even, um, hmm, oh well, there's only 24 of them. How hard can it be? All right, page six. The wolf protects his pack, so there's the gender, and does not back down from a challenge. Unlike the bull, who stands his ground unless significantly provoked, the wolf takes the fight to his adversary. He's driven by a passionate internal fire that can warm but also burn. If you don't heed the wolf's growl, he will eventually bite. So we can see that the fire definitely adds something to it. Dorisaz has an element of chaos, destructive natural forces, aggression, and conflict. These are united for the purpose of defense and protection. It can also symbolize potent male sexuality, instinctual will, vital eroticism, and a regenerative catalyst. It represents, so that regenerative, regenerative catalyst, think about um, wildfires and how there are certain um, trees and like pine cones and things that will not open and release seeds unless they have been through fire. It represents a tendency toward change through catharsis, purging and cleansing fire. Thorisas is the sharp, painful stab of the thorn that jolts us awaken into awareness. So there's the thorns. In reverse, this rune represents danger, defenselessness, and betrayal. It can indicate explosive violence, strife, irritation, or a bad person. Fortunately, I didn't do reverses. Keywords, protection, passion, defense, conflict, male potency. Magical workings, Thorisas supports and aids your defense against adversaries. If you have a challenging phone call coming up, inscribe Thorisas on the inside of your phone case. Combine with Algis for even broader protection. I love the magical workings. That's just this, it really delivers here. So protection, passion, defense, conflict, but I, I'm really stuck on that regenerative, um, what did it say? Catalyst. So the times that we are living in are definitely putting us through trial by fire, are they not? Um, we're, we're going through the flames. It's burning away some things that were not really essential. You know, it's helping us to see what really matters. But we've got a lot of force and aggression and chaos around us. There's no doubt about that. And we have Daga, so I think that's going to be an end one. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Change is dynamic. So look at the, um, see butterfly, look at the rune itself. It looks like a butterfly. And this is a rune that there will be no reverse for. But she gives a reverse. Beca ah, because, okay, if you are just using the actual runes, there's not going to be a reverse for this one because it looks the same both ways. But since these are cards, we can get a reverse. And that's appreciated. Change is dynamic and dramatic. Who could imagine the stunning butterfly would spring from the little caterpillar? As the delicate butterfly unfurls their new wings, a new day dawns, and they're granted a new and higher awareness than they could have previously ever imagined. Below, their cocoon hangs in the place where before and after meet. And that's a chrysalis. This is a butterfly. Butterflies have chrysalises. Moths have cocoons. Okay. Dagas has a beautiful, brilliant, light-filled energy. It represents the awakening and clarity that daylight brings. When this rune appears, there's hope and happiness, bold change, and a new beginning. It is a good time to start something new. Dagas refers to a daily cycle in contrast to longer, gentler time periods like Yera's year cycle. Okay, a daily cycle. Dagas also speaks of balancing opposite forces, such as light and dark, mental and emotional, masculine and feminine, doubt and certainty. Okay, let's see. New day dawns. I don't see a gender here. In reverse, this rune indicates an ending, a limit, or a wrong time for change. Blindness and hopelessness are also represented here. Keywords, breakthrough, awakening, enlightenment, balance point, transformation. This is a helpful rune for spells if you want to block the bad but still allow the good through. If appropriate, use it in ritual when casting a circle. Okay, so we've got 
the chaos here. I don't have to explain that anymore. It's the times we're living in. But then we have a new beginning here and uh, the transformation and daylight. So we've got the fire here, but then daylight dawning. And I love this hope and happiness, bold change and a new beginning. And then Hagalaz here is... <clears throat> The scorpion is not soft or gentle. She is, however, vital to the natural balance of life. She. Without her sharp sting to clear the weak, stagnant, and diseased, life would never be able to grow back stronger and renew. So how interesting that, you know, while there's this bold new beginning, we have to recognize that there's going to be some, some death and clearing away to bring things into balance. So whatever is weak, stagnant, or diseased has to get out of the way for this new to be born. Hagalaz is a freezing storm, but its hail and ice will melt, becoming water to nourish new growth. The first rune of the second, Et. It represents the beginning of a testing time. Only by weathering the storm will you develop and grow. Also called the mother rune, it can be a destructive force of nature. How interesting! The storm out of your control can feel painful and unfair, but this disruption or unwelcome change will bring positive transformation and long-term gain. In reverse, this rune is a warning against stagnation, victimhood, and clinging to the past. It's a reminder to avoid placing blame. Keywords, disruption, endings and beginnings, transformation, radical change, completion. So we've got transformation and transformation coming out of this chaos. Wow. I'm not going to read the magical workings of all of them because I want to re leave something for you to discover here. Okay, but this is good for shadow work. So daylight, shadow. Wow. Okay, Yera is the honeybee. After much diligence, the honeybee finally reaps the sweetest harvest. They are connected and attuned to the slow, ever-moving cycles of nature and time. The bee needs to move through many steps and stages before their efforts in the wildflower, wildflower fields bring the joyful harvest of honey. As the twelfth rune, Yera speaks of the yearly cycles of tilling, sowing, and reaping. It awaits the slow arrival of change with patience, planning, and hard work. Yera has a steady and joyous energy, and it calls you to pause for a moment and pay attention. You will reap what you sow, but are you sowing the future you want? It also asks, is the timing right? And that's in bold italics. Yera indicates a total and happy completion with the promise that your reward is coming. In reverse, this rune represents bad timing, poverty, conflict, and being out of sync. Fruition, balance, abundance, cycles and rhythms, harmony. So this is that yearly cycle. So we have chaos, and we're looking at the, the light and the shadow in the chaos, but then we need to look at what are we doing. This talks about bold new beginnings here, but we need to sow those. We need to know that... Um, that's not going to happen in a flash. So we need to use our time in the present in planting the seeds of the future that we want. So we need to be clear on the future that we want and recognize, um, you know, the, the unfolding cycles of time and really look, take that long view and plant those seeds now. Okay, so we look. 32... The sun flashes off the brilliant feathers of the kingfisher as he bursts from the water, droplets sparkling like diamonds. Filled with pure life force, the vibrant little bird has boundless energy and overflows with well-being. Suilo holds within it the radiance of the sun, and we do see the sun in the background there. It is the energy of life, strength of character, and completeness. This rune speaks of clear vision, the victory of good over evil, and light dispelling the dark. How interesting that it comes next to this shadow card. Good fortune and positivity await you. You have the energy to overcome any challenges and achieve your life goals. In reverse, this rune is a message of false goals or the loss of goals. 
the illusion of success and bad advice. Success, sensuality, wholeness, life force, victory. Okay, and it's a healing rune. So the radiance of the sun, life, strength, completeness, clear vision, triumph of good over evil. So this is saying that if we do plant those seeds and we are aware of the shadow and what needs to die and go away and we are willing to aid that process, then healing can happen, completeness can come, um, we can feel whole, we can be victorious. Dang, and then at the bottom is manas. The keenly intelligent meerkat finds joy in family and kin. Each individual contributes their own strengths to the betterment and success of the clan and society. Lessons learned by one generation are then passed down to those that follow, continuing to strengthen and protect the clan. There's that long view again. What kind of world do you want your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren to live in? As much as Manas speaks of the joy of clan and kinship, this rune represents the rational mind and intelligence rather than emotion and instinct. When you're presented with this rune, it's time to leave emotions behind and return to the rational. It references the seed of divine intelligence in the human soul and our united collective potential. This is a time for the mind, memory, and learning. In reverse, this rune represents depression, blindness, self-delusion, bigotry, and intellectual arrogance. Wow! The reverses of these really are reverses. It's amazing. Keywords are humanity, intelligence, awareness, society learning so you know as we're looking at what we want to plant and you know taking that long view we need to do it as the collective looking at what collectively um, what legacy we are creating here dang but it's with the intellect not from an emotional place so we need to be sensible we need to use our brains i'm thinking about all the incredible um, innovations and inventions that are happening now with alternative energy sources with uh, dealing with waste and um, you know they're finding these plastic eating mycelia and just amazing stuff and I'm going to do the magical working here. Use this rune as an aid to access the collective unconscious of earth and humanity. Draw it in the sand at the beach or in the dirt when forest bathing. Wow. So out of the chaos, we bring our the strength of our intellect and the strength of the collective together. Ready for transformation through light and shadow. From there, we've got the full moon here and here and here. Look at the full moons. The only moons showing up here are the full moons. So things are culminating. This is certainly a culminating moment. The sun is about to come out. Look at the worker bees here. That's a collective thing. This is a collective thing. Wow, what a wonderful little deck. And what a perfect size deck for me with my fatigue. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think and uh, drop some comments down below. We can have a bit of a conversation. I, I think that would be nice. Um, I will see you next time. I hope to do a live stream this week, but we'll see what happens. Until then, this is Luna. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.